Welcome to Medical Monday with Summit Medical Group. I'm Marcella Palmer with a special report on minimally invasive robotically assisted surgery and the efforts of pioneering Summit Medical Group surgical oncologist Dr. Andrew Gums to educate the public and medical community on the benefits of using this cutting edge cancer surgery technique. Minimally invasive surgery started in the 80s and it's really developed since then really exponentially because there's now a generation of surgeons that were brought up with these techniques. What we do is we take the pain of the operation and we put it on ourselves. The surgery is more complicated sometimes. Uh, we need a longer training period to learn how to do this and sometimes they take longer but then the patient really gets a benefit. They have less pain, uh, fewer scars, decreased chance of hernias in the long term and decreased chance of blood loss. One of the ways I do minimally invasive surgery is I use a, a small robot that is sterilizable and fits right on the patient. It holds the, the laparoscope or the, the camera that enables us to do these procedures through small incisions. It gives me a completely steady image and I'm actually the one controlling what we're looking at as opposed to somebody else looking at what they want to look at. So you get a nice steady image, you can do m much more complicated procedures, you can do safer dissections around big vessels and remove larger tumors. Another robot that people use, the surgeon's actually operating several feet away which for the type of surgery I do, uh, I personally don't think is as safe. In case you have a bleeding problem, other surgeons operating away obviously have to get back to the patient, they have to scrub, and it takes a little time. There are some people though who can't undergo minimally invasive surgery, specifically people with intracranial hypertension, uh, pulmonary hypertension, and people with closed angle glaucoma. That's a pretty small group of people, but that's just due to the pressure from the, the, the gas that we have to put in the belly during surgery so that we can see things but it's ideal in people with obesity, people with, uh, with bad lungs, people are able to breathe better because they have smaller incisions. It's also it's very good for people with, um, with liver failure, actually. Uh, people get less problems if they have bad livers. So it's, it's really an ideal thing. Um, and we're even able to do minimally invasive surgery on people that have, have had previous surgery. I've done training and I used to work at Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia where I did the minimally invasive techniques for esophageal surgery, but we're very excited to bring that to northern New Jersey. And we did a, we did a, you know, a young gentleman who unfortunately had uh, esophageal cancer and we did everything with keyhole incisions and um, he looked great, was home within a week and actually back at work within two weeks, which is really, I couldn't, I couldn't keep the guy from going to work. I couldn't believe it. I was like, stay home, but he wanted to go back to work and he did. And, and it was, uh, it's really nice. You know, he's a young man with young kids and he's already working. If it had been the traditional open as opposed to the minimally invasive approach, he would have a big abdominal incision, a big chest incision called a thoracotomy. And people used to have a lot of breathing problems uh, because of this. They just physically can't take a big breath because they're in too much pain. So because we were able to do it with keyhole incisions in his belly and his chest, he, he did great, was, was eating in a week, and actually home in a week, and back at work in two weeks. So it's, uh, it's, it's when it works well, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, you know. This has been your Medical Monday with Summit Medical Group. Thanks for watching. Summit Medical Group is here to help you live well and stay well. Mm -hmm.